So just to sort of give a little bit of background, um, health boards in Wales um, provide a comprehensive range of healthcare services, um, both in primary and secondary care. So those are your GP services and your hospital services. Um, and there's also another organisation called the Welsh Health Specialist Services Committee, or WISC as it's known in short, who are then responsible for providing more specialist services um, routinely across NHS Wales. But as we know, um, sometimes there are limits on the um, healthcare services we can provide. So um, an IPFR is um, basically a request to a health board or WISC to fund a treatment that's not routinely provided and falls outside of the range of services that we either routinely provide or commission um, from other healthcare providers. Um, An IPFR would usually fall within three categories. Um, they can include um, something that's either new, novel or unproven. And an example of that would be something like um, a cancer drug that's yet um, to be approved for use in that condition, a bit like the unlicensed medicines that have already been discussed this morning. Um, it can be for a treatment that's um, not usually provided in the clinical circumstances for which the patient requires the treatment. And an example of that could be um, a patient who wants um, surgery for varicose veins for cosmetic reasons rather than medical reasons. Or it could be um, a request for a treatment for um, a rare or specialist condition and the patient's not eligible in accordance with the clinical policy that's in place. And an example of that could be a patient who wants um, plastic surgery for personal preference rather than medical need. Um, An IPFR is also not limited to medicines. Um, they include requests for um, surgical procedures, um, pieces of equipment, um, drugs, or just a, a specialist service. Um, so therefore they're not confined, as I say, solely to requests just for drugs. Um, we have in place an always policy to ensure that there's consistency in approach. Um, each health board has its own IPFR panel, um, as does WISC. Um, and what usually happens is if a, if a clinician, that could be a hospital G, um, consultant or a GP, believes that a patient would benefit from a treatment um, that's not usually provided, um, and they can evidence why that patient would gain a significant clinical benefit and um, that that treatment would be value for money for that particular patient, then they can complete an IPFR application form, which is then sent into the health board where that patient resides. Um, and a panel would consider all of the information that's presented in front of it in line with the policy criteria and then reach a decision. And usually on that panel, you've got um, a range of um, clinicians um, they could have particular clinical backgrounds. They would um, include a pharmacy, somebody from public health. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head now. Finance, um, somebody with management experience in terms of policy, but also ideally a lay member, which is where we seem to be struggling with IPFR. Um, so the information that the panel would consider would be um, the information that's in the application and any evidence that's presented in line with that um, treatment request. So if it's a medicine, for example, that's not routinely provided, then the treatment they could be looking at could be um, some trial data or some journals in relation to that treatment. And again, if it's a surgical procedure, there would be some evidence that would support that, but the clinician would be making a case around the individual circumstances of that patient anyway. Um, the information that the panel receives is completely anonymous. So the panel members you know, have no idea who that patient is, even though it's an individual patient request. So the, um, the consideration is solely around the clinical circumstances of that patient and that evidence presented. 
And um, so the reason I'm here today really is try, trying to canvas some um, more lay representation on these panels because as I say you know we have a number of um, IPFR panels across Wales in each of our health boards. So um, a lay member would be um, a fully fledged um, sort of voting member of the IPFR panel. They would be somebody who is not employed by the health board, um, somebody who's, got, who's usually got personal experience of using health or care services and may live in the community affected by the decisions made by that health board. Um, they don't need to have a background in health in healthcare, um, which I think is what lay members often think is required. Um, the lay members role as part of the panel um, enables them to bring a different and independent set of perspectives to the discussion. Um, they will have um, share the responsibility as part of the panel to ensure that that panel acts effectively and takes into account all of the information presented in each case um, and obviously acts in accordance with the policy criteria. Um, we recognise that lay and professional views are expressed through different vocabularies um, and knowledge bases, and that's essential to ensure that we can be as open and transparent in our approach as possible. We've over the years had a number of issues um, faced with recruitment, and um, we're not sure why, because the feedback we have from lay me members is they actually find it really interesting. Um, we often hear from potential lay members that they were concerned about the contribution they could make because they haven't got a background in health. But as I said, that, that's not important. Um, we will provide lay members with tr training before they start. They also have the opportunity to observe a panel discussion, to understand the type of information that's discussed beforehand, if that's what they would want. Um, and we also work with the AWTTC to organise annual workshops, um, and that provides additional training and an opportunity to meet with lay members as well. So, so often they find that really helpful. Um, so I think today what I'm looking for is as, you, as you've sort of said, Claire, is some help on how we can heighten awareness on the importance of, of lay membership on panels such as IPFR um, and what forums we can try and use to advertise these roles. And in terms of time commitment, it, it's difficult because it's usually obviously the panels are based on the amount of requests we receive and we never know what's going to come in through the door. Um, but ideally, I would say um, that the panels meet on average once or twice a month. Since COVID, panels are held virtually via, via Teams, so there's not a commitment to travel. Um, on average, three to four cases are discussed at those panels. Um, and whilst meetings are usually scheduled for about two hours, I wouldn't say that they tend to last that long. Um, the additional time commitment that would need to be provided is obviously you would have the papers sent out to you beforehand. So it would be um, some time commitment required to read the papers and do some research about the um, type of treatment that's been requested. 